Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared three multiple choice questions for you and all of them are based on the same pedigree. So even if you know an answer to the first question, wait for the other two questions as well. So here is the pedigree and here is the question. Which of these inheritance patterns would be the most likely explanation of the above pedigree? And here is the variants to choose from. The first variant, autosomal dominant, why it is not autosomal dominant? For example, if this person who is affected would be, for example, genotype capital A and small a and dominant allele here means defective allele because this is dominant genetic disorder. This female is going to be homozygous recessive in order to be normal. This couple may have unaffected children if they would inherit any of these alleles from mother's side and this recessive allele from the father's side. So this may happen. But dominant genetic disorders do not skip generations and reappear in the next generation. It is not possible. So this is not autosomal dominant. Next, let's check X-link recessive. Why it is not X-link recessive? Assume that this person has defective X chromosome in order to be affected and normal Y chromosome. And this female has two normal X chromosomes. The son here should inherit from the father normal Y chromosome, which specify his maleness. And from the mother side, he can inherit any of the X chromosomes. Both of them are going to be normal. So this explains his normal phenotype. Now we should understand that these children should get defective X chromosome from the mother side. For example, because their grandmother had two defective X chromosomes. And their mother, for example, had one defective X chromosome, one normal. And because this is X-link recessive genetic disorder, phenotype of the mother is going to be normal. And her son may be affected if he is going to inherit this defective X chromosome from the mother's side, normal Y chromosome from the father's side, but there is no explanation how this female may be affected. She should have two defective X chromosome, just like her grandmother. She can get one defective X chromosome from her mother's side, but from her father's side, she only can inherit normal X chromosome. So there is no way for this female to be affected. So this is not X-link recessive genetic disorder. Can it be autosomal recessive genetic disorder variant C? Let's take a look. This male is affected, so should have two defective alleles. This female would have two normal alleles and all the children are going to be heterozygous, so would be carriers, but the phenotype is going to be normal. This female have to be also homozygous recessive in order to be affected. This male is going to be homozygous normal and the progeny are also going to be heterozygous. So as you see, this couple have to be obligate carriers. They are going to be of the normal phenotype. So we have one parent here on the top, another here on the side. Here is a simple Punnett square. Let's take a look what we are going to see in the progeny. So capital A small a here, capital A small a here, and small a small a here. As you see, one quarter of the progeny in this couple are going to be affected. And three quarters are going to be of the normal phenotype if it is autosomal recessive. Here we see that two children out of four children affected. Does it meet requirements of the uh, disease to be autosomal recessive? Yes, it's not necessary that exactly 25% of the children are going to be affected. If we take large numbers, for example, thousands of couples like this, we will find that number is going to be very close to 25%. But when we have such small sample, we may have great deviation from the 
ideal number 75% to 25% ratio. So autosomal recessive may explain this pattern of inheritance, but let's check mitochondrial inheritance. In this case, for example, if we have affected male, none of his progeny are going to be affected if female here, his spouse is normal. If, for example, in this couple, spouse is affected, all her progeny, all progeny of this couple are going to be affected, regardless of the sex, 100%. They would inherit mitochondria from their mother. And we do not see here this pattern. And mitochondrial disorders do not skip generations. It is like dominant genetic disorder. One can easily see where it was inherited from which of the parent. So as you see, we have only one correct variant, variant C. Next question, based on the answer to the question one, what is the probability that the newborn male marked with question mark one will be affected by the condition. We already have found that both parents have to be obligate carriers and probability for this person to be affected. This is going to be 25% or one quarter, which is answer E. And the last question, if the child marked with question mark two was not affected by the condition, what would you tell the father of that child? And here's the variants to choose from. So let's check them. Variant A, you are not a carrier of the condition, but your child is. So we should tell this person here. Can we tell this to this person? No, because it states that you are not a carrier, but this person obligate carrier because he should get his recessive allele from the mother side and normal allele, dominant allele from his father side in order to be phenotypically normal, but still he is a carrier. No way that second allele would be normal because mother doesn't have normal allele. So he is obligate carrier. So we can cross out this variant. Next variant, B, we do not know if you are a carrier of the condition or not. However, your child is a carrier. No, we do know that this person is a carrier. So we also cross out this variant. Next, C, you are a carrier of the condition, but your child is not. As you see, his mother have to be homozygous recessive. And if we assume that this child is phenotypically normal, not affected, let me underline. That means that from the father side, he got normal dominant A allele. But from the mother side, there is no way. He only can get recessive allele. So according to our problem, what would you tell the father of the child? You're a carrier of the condition, but your child is not. No child if his phenotype normal, also have to be obligate carrier just like his father. So this statement is false. Next statement D, you are a carrier of the condition and so is your child. Yes, this is true statement, but let's check another two. You are both affected, but we cannot detect the disease yet. This is also wrong statement. And the last variant, F, we do not know if you or your child is a carrier of the condition. No, we know for sure that they have to be carriers of the condition if, according to our problem, child is phenotypically normal. He is obligate carrier and his father obligate carrier. So the only correct statement is D, you are a carrier of the condition and so is your child. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.